going to give another lecture today for the, our club meeting. And um, as many, as most of you know, the reason why I am actually here in New York City is that I had the honor to uh, start a position at the Metropolitan Museum last year as visiting researcher. And as also most of you know, the Met has a vast collection of what I would refer to as samurai gear. It's more than 4,000 objects. And when I started my position, uh, the first thing is to get an overview of all the objects. And that means opening all the drawers, physically handling each of the fitting swords, koshirai, without studying them in depth, of course, just to physically see every object they have. And in course of doing so, I came across many interesting objects, as you can imagine. And I, if it's desired, I want to start a small series today, which is which I call the Discoveries at the Met. And today I want to start with a very interesting Kosuga by uh, Funada Ikin. Uh, so this is the object in question. It's a Kosuga. As everyone can see, late Edo period, Machibori, Polish Chibuichi. It, it shows a western ship in, in Kebori, Katakiribori, with the flags inlaid in gold, silver, shakudo, and copper, uh, uh, copper hira sogan. The Kosoka is signed at the butt end, uh, Ikin plus Kao monogram. And when you turn it around, it has a Shakudo backplate that has a nice little inscription on it, which I want to talk about later. But first, before we continue, just a brief uh, introduction about the artist himself. Uh, so Funada Ikin, born as Funada Shosuke, uh, he was born in 1812 in Tsuroka, which uh, was located within the Shonai Fief in Deva province, so in the north, on the northern coast of Japan, which is present-day Yamagata prefecture. His father, Funada Kancho, he was also a Kinko artist, but he died soon after Ikin was born. So his mother uh, remarried when he was about seven or eight years old, and she married another local sword fittings maker. Yoshinobu, who gave Ikin his initial training. So when Ikin was 15 years old, he and his father went to Edo for the first time, where he learned more from Kumagai Yoshiyuki, but who also died a couple of years later. So now Ikin in Edo wanted to learn more from a more famous master, and he approached uh, Tanaka Kiyotoshi, but Tanaka Kiyotoshi refused to accept him as a student. So the next thing he did, he was approaching Goto Ichicho, and Ichicho eventually accepted him. He was 17 years old at the time, and he stayed with Ichicho for 10 years, going back with, the ma with his master to Kyoto, receiving the Ichi character from Ichicho, and taking the name Ikin. So when he went back to Edo after 10 years training, uh, he was hired by the Sakai, the daimyo of Shonai, where he was, where he came from. So he received a stipend in the amount of supporting two persons, plus the coverage, the cost coverage of training two students and traveling on a regular basis between the capital and his hometown. So Ikin died young in 1863 at the age of 52. This was very briefly the career of Ikin. And now we're gonna go back to our Kosuka. Now, when it comes to Western ships in Japanese art, it generally refers to two of the following scenarios. The first scenario is the arrival of the Westerners, which is the Portuguese in 1543, their introduction of firearms and the introduction of European goods and the maritime trade that followed thereafter and that lasted until the early 1600s. And the second scenario we see Western ships in Japanese art is the opening of Japan in the 1850s. Strictly speaking, the motive of the Kosuka does not belong into any of those 
two K yeah. numbers. Oh. Also, it's related to point two. <coughs> but before we get there, let me briefly outline these two scenarios. So in 1543, a Chinese junk with Portuguese crew members was driven by a storm to anchor at the Japanese island of Tanegashima. The lord of the island purchased two matchlock guns from the Portuguese and immediately had a swordsmith copying their barrel and firing mechanisms. And this encounter was the catalyst for a trade route between the Portuguese settlement of Goa and Nagasaki, which was the so-called Namban trade. And as the Portuguese had the hulls of their large carracks painted black with pitch, they were referred to as Kurofune, literally black ships by the Japanese. Very soon, these black ships became synonymous for bringing exciting new goods into Japan and for the prosperity of the Momoyama era in general. Here you can see a very famous screen. It's designated as a Chuyu Bunkasai by Kano Naisen. It's titled Visiting Southern Barbarians. And you can see a detail of one of these Kurofune ships here. So after the Momoyama era, things changed relatively quickly. And I'm not gonna go into too many details, but when in 1637, peasants of the town of Shimabara near Nagasaki revolted, many of which were Christians, they triggered uh, a, prohibition of, a prohibition of Christianity. But this didn't come out of blue sky because uh, Hideyoshi already treated Christianity with suspicion and now the Tokugawa saw the religious and colonial influence of the Portuguese and the Spaniards as a threat to the stability of their just established shogunate. So after this Shimabara rebellion, they issued an isolationist policy called the closed country policy, Sakoku. All subsequent relations and trade between Japan and the outside world were limited to a small artificial island, like here, you can see here, which, is, which was, was uh, named Dejima in the Bay of Nagasaki, and which was basically restricted to the Dutch. There was some trade loophole through uh, the Shimazu and their kingdom of Ryukyu, but this should not be, I wanna omit this here in this talk. So after this uh, isolationist uh, policy in 1637, mm. we have to fast forward two and a half centuries and skip also the context of the Kosuga for the moment. So. United States Commodore Matthew Perry arrives with a four-ship squadron in Edo Bay in 1843 and forces the shogunate into trade negotiations. And this act uh, shook the country to the core because everyone was, was realizing that just four ships can arrive at our bay and the shogunate is not able to, not able to uh, like ward them off or get any bigger, any better trade deals out of this whole thing. So with this smooth and the anti tokugawa fraction, 15 years later, as everyone knows, 1868, we had the abolishment of the samurai class, a westernization of the country, and it was all initiated by Commodore Perry showing up in 1853. And by the way, Commodore Perry's uh, steamships were referred to as black ships as well. For example, here, the USS Susquehanna, because they had a black hull and because of the black smoke that came out of their steam engines. So to recapitulate, re recapitulate uh, the western ships in Japanese art either depict this Portuguese Momoyama Namban trade, which is usually an auspicious motive because it was a time of prosper, or it refers to the opening of Japan, which is a more difficult and more sophisticated context. And this brings us back to our Kosuga and in particular to the inscription on the reverse, which reads, and which I will translate in the following. So 
So, who was Rakko? Rakko was the pen name of Matsudaira Sadanobu. He was the chief senior counselor of the Tokugawa shogunate and his work as a counselor was kind of a mixed blessing, if you will. On the one hand, he was able to recover the shogunate's finances from the mismanagements of his predecessor, but on the other hand, he mishandled several issues in the relations between shogunate and the court. And on top of that, the landing of the Finnish-Swedish lieutenant of the Imperial Russian military, Adam Kirillovich Laxman, Sadanovo mishandled this incident as well. So the issue with Laxman was the following. There were two Japanese castaways, Daikoku Yakodayo and Isokichi, who had landed on the Aleuts and were living in Kamchatka for t about 10 years. And Laxman and his father saw this as a good opportunity. Hey, we could bring these two castaways back and force the shogunate into trade negotiations with Russia. So Lexman took the two castaways and landed all with them on Hokkaido. They were greeted by the local daimyo, the Matsumae, and the Matsumae didn't know how to deal with this issue, so they con contacted Salonobo. And Salonobo was sending 500 men to stop them from traveling farther into Japan on the land route. And he made several appeasements to Laxman, like Sadanobu gave him a letter that the Russians should be allowed to come back the year after into Nagasaki with one trade ship. So Laxman left with that, then Laxman returned one year later and the shogunate had changed his mind and said, Yo, we're not going to trade anymore. And Sadanobu really messed up, so shogunate was mad at him. At their chief counselor said, why did you make all this, all these commitments? Why did you give him a letter that he can come back? So Sadanobu eventually retired the year after this whole mess, going back to his initial job, if you will. He was the daimyo of Shirakawa. The year after that, 1794, he approached his painter, Tani Buncho. He was still upset about the whole issue about the foreigners, foreigners arriving and not being able to handle the matter in how the shogunate would have dealt with it, that meant like killing everything and driving them back to Russia. So he approached the painter, Tani Buncho, to paint a western ship, which he would then himself add with an inscription on the left side. So this is the ship that Tani Buncho made and on the left is uh, Matsudaira Sadanobu's poem. And his plan was to turn this into a woodblock print and distribute it all over the country. And here you can see the left is the painting and the right is what was the woodblock print that was distributed. And Sadanobu's plan was to give the Japanese uh, a wake up call and this brings us back to our Kosuga. As you can see here, Funada Ikin really, with some concessions of space, of course, he faithfully copied Matsudaira's poem, or not poem, slogan onto the Kosuga, <coughs> letter by letter. And the literal, the literal translation of this inscription is, the dream treasure is that you do not forget the arrival of foreign ships, which is kind of strange without context, because what's the dream treasure, and what's the treasure, and why dream? And this brings us back to uh, Japanese tradition. By the 80, late 18th century, early 19th century, mostly uh, the, the general population, when they saw a ship, it was mostly this ship, the treasure ship, the Takarabune, which had the seven lucky gods on them, and when you put when you put a painting of the of such a takarabune under your pillow on New Year's on the second day of New Year's, you are going to have especially a good dream. Mm -hmm. And that's why Sadanobu used this, the, the reference to a dream. 
in his inscription. That means Saranovo's plan was <coughs> Japanese population seeing this ship, thinking of yeah, it might be a tra a Takarapune with the seven lucky goats, but oh no no, wait a minute. It's not a Takarapune. It's not a dream. So his his actual meaning was forget about this uh Takarapune New Year's BS. When you dream about ships, you should be dreaming about those western ships because they are coming and arriving at our coast. Mm -hmm. So this was uh, Matsudaira Salanobos uh, wake up call that he tried to do with his woodblock print and this is really interesting to see uh, Funada Ikin having this ship rendered differently because it's 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 a it's a hor it's a vertical uh, motif of course on the Kosuka but this is what I wanted to show you in this first series of my discoveries at the Met that when you see a Kosuka like this, you see, oh, this is a nice little ship, neat, Funada Ikin. <laughs> but without the context, you don't know what's the whole background of him, of Matsudaira Sadanobu, that it was a warning, that this was going on 20 years before Ikin was born. And this is a nice little object that tells you there's so much more going on with all these Japanese objects that it's just a ship shown. And if you want, this will be a start of a series and I could introduce more to the New York Token Kai as we go forward with our meetings. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marco. I, I, I have a question. Why mm -hmm. would Iken uh, do this? Why would he create this? Who did he create it for? What was the so statement? My, my idea was that he had a client who was very aware of those flyers that Matsudaira had sent out years before. And because when Ikin was active, it was 40, 30 years later, and again, the ship issue was coming up, and he probably approached Ikin and said, please copy this. I give you the original flyer of Sadanobu that I had probably as a child or my father had, and we have to do another warning. So please make this Kosuka for me. David? Yeah, so I have a question. Mm -hmm. I really like the presentation um, first. Um, you mentioned the black ships, mm -hmm. and I always thought that that referred to Commodore Perry's American ships that yeah. went into Edo Bay uh, in uh, 1850. Mm -hmm. But it, it seems like the term black ship dates clear back to, to the, the Momoyama. Yes. Yeah, to the Momoyama period when the when, when the, actually the the, the the Portuguese had sure. still, still had trade ties with yes, yeah. Japan. Yeah, it dates before it, the period yeah. of it Edo goes, period isolation. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it goes back to this the black the huge carracks that were coming yeah. with tobacco, all these interesting things, and they that's when the term kurofuni appears the first time in the documents. Okay. Did the did the do the kanji change from no no from. from uh, you know, Momoyama period to late Edo period? Or no, it's, it's the same country it's for black and okay. ship. Yep. Okay. Interesting. Yep. Now, Marcus, how, how did he uh, achieve that blue color in the clothes gun? It's very rare. On the back side? Uh, the front side. The, the, it looks like inlay, and the flag is the flag. blue. On the flag? I don't recall seeing blue yeah. in, in metalwork. Yeah. This might. I, this might be an effect uh, of the photo because it's just one that's even better, yeah. better photo. Yeah, yeah. 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 You, you mean like this? No, there's yeah. a, another oh. slide that's okay. even larger. Okay, let's see. In the end. There you go. Yeah, yeah. like mm -hmm. blue color is super. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've seen that in, in yeah. Shakudo before. Yeah. So Shakudo that's Shakudo, yeah. obviously, yeah. and that's silver. And this might be uh, a Shibuichi that is just a different kind of, of alloy, compo alloy yeah, component. Interesting, because I've seen, I, I had, a, I had a, or, a fitting that was Shakado mm -hmm. that, that almost kind of had a bluish tinge to it. Yeah, yeah. that's not so, but not that blue. No, no, yeah, not that blue. <laughs> that could be the flash. Yeah, yeah. right. It would be nice yeah. to get it out and show it here. Yes, it yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Ye
had sneak it out. It's like a light bulb. Yeah. 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 No, it does. Yeah. So I was doing also, I was asking some colleagues about the flags and it was confirmed that it's supposedly Russian flags of that time. Oh, Italian. Indeed. <laughs> Recognize. Yep. When did Meta acquire this um, Kolkata? Uh, I have to double check. Let me see. So it came, uh, it came into the collection in '36, and it was a gift of uh, the Mansfield collection that he donated to the Met. Like it contained like 400 sword fittings as a gift in 1936. Wow. Yeah. Just a quick question: Were you aware of this whole scenario before you started studying this, this uh, Kozika? I had a hunch because I saw the characters. Of Rakuo, right. that means Matsudaira Sadanobu, and he was also engaged in coastal defense. Uh, and that's why I thought this might be more than just a ship, and that's why I was digging deeper. Interesting. Yeah. That's great. So, Marcos, how were you able to match that to the block, woodblock print? I was able to oh. find the woodblock print, and uh, uh, it's still there are some woodblock, woodblock prints going around, and I was able to find the I was able to find the original painting that Matsudaira. It's in a in a local museum. Oh. Yeah. In the states or no in Japan. In Japan. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.